and welcome to A Skeptic Reads the Quran. And um, I just want to pause our study of the Quran um, to just read an extract from this book, Jesus and Muhammad, by Mark A. Gabriel, PhD. And uh, it says on the back, Mark A. Gabriel, PhD, grew up as a devout Muslim in Egypt, went on to earn a doctorate in Islamic studies, and, ta and taught at Al Azhar University, Cairo, the most prestigious Islamic university in the world. As a practicing Christian, for the past 10 years, <laughs> I expect it's more than that now, um, he has earned a master's degree in the world religion, in, sorry, in world religion, <laughs> not in the world religion, in world, <laughs> in world religion, and a PhD in Christian education. His previous books include Islam and the Jews and Islam and Terrorism, which is this one. And I just want, I, I want to read an extract from this book. Um, because I I think I feel it's important to you know, that we understand um, a bit more about who Muhammad uh, was, and I feel the best way to understand who he was is to um, re is to find out about his wives. So I'm going to I'm going to read. Um, from page 177 of this book, um, under the heading Muhammad's Most Famous Wives. Just as Muhammad's attitude towards non-believers changed after he moved to Medina, so did his practice regarding wives. Let's look at his first wife and then at the 12 other women he married in Medina. Khadija, the first wife. When Muhammad was a young man of 25, he married his first wife, Khadija, who was 40 at the time. She is described as offering him great emotional support as he received revelations and experienced resistance from the people of Mecca. He remained married to her alone for 25 years until her death. Aisha the child bride. About one year after moving to Medina, Muhammad chose a wife that was surprising, even by Arabian society standards. She was the six-year-old daughter of one of his most loyal followers, Abu Bakr. And he quotes from the Hadith. The Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years i.e. until his death and if you look at the end notes um, that is a quote from the correct books of Bukhari Volume 7, Book 62, Number 88, narrated by Ursa. More than just a perplexing story about a child bride, Aisha became a key figure in Islamic history. She narrated thousands of hadith describing Muhammad's life and teachings. She was also involved in an incident that seriously threatened the credibility of Islam. When Muhammad led his army in a battle, he always chose one of his wives to go with him. In AH5, he took Aisha with him on a raid against Beni Mustalik, a Jewish tribe. She would have been about 11 years old at the time. This is the story according to Aisha. 
Aisha rode in a special covered compartment on the back of a camel. At night, the raiding party stopped and Aisha left the group to use the toilet in the desert. On the way back, she realised she had lost a necklace and went back to look for it. By the time she returned to the stopping place, everyone had left, thinking she was in the riding compartment on the camel's back. She waited in the desert until a Muslim soldier came by and recognised her. He brought her back to Medina the next morning on his camel. And the end note is again from the correct books of Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, number 274, narrated by Aisha. Some people accused Aisha of having an affair in the desert with the young Muslim soldier. Mohammed was unable to prove that she did not. People began to say, how can this man be a prophet if he doesn't know what happened to his wife? For more than 20 days this standoff continued. Finally Mohammed received a revelation from Gabriel that cleared Aisha of wrongdoing. Of wrongdoing and condemned those who had been accusing her. And this can be found in Surah 42, verses 11 to 18. The repercussions of this incident did not end here. One of Muhammad's cousins, with whom he grew up, Ali ibn Abu Talib, had urged Muhammad to, do, to divorce Aisha. Aisha heard this, and carried a grudge against Ali for the rest of her life. After the death of the third leader of Islam, Uthman, Ali ibn Abu Talib was elected to become the next Islamic caliph. But Aisha refused to recognise him as the leader, and she gathered an army of supporters and marched against him. In the ensuing battle of of Camel, 10,000 Muslims were killed. Ali ibn Abu Talib was killed and his son became his successor until he was poisoned by Muslims. So Aisha, the third bride, uh, <laughs> sorry, the child bride, is a major figure in Islamic history. Let's look at another one of Muhammad's most interesting wives. Zainab, the wife of Muhammad's adopted son. Muhammad went one day to the house of his adopted son Zaid bin Harith, 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 Harith. <laughs> Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. When he arrived, he found out that his adopted son wasn't home and that his son's wife, Zainab, was home alone. As he came to the door, her eyes met hers and Muhammad said, Praise be to the one who changes the hearts and the sights. He felt her love in his heart. She became aware that he had a certain desire for her. When her husband came back, she told him that uh, she told him what had happened. There were two problems with this situation. First, Zainab was married, and second, her husband was Muhammad's adopted son. Islamic law forbids a man from marrying his son's wives. However, from that day on, Zainab mistreated her husband by showing him she was not interested in him any longer. Every time she would do so, Zaid would go to Mohammed and complain about his wife and tell him about the abuse he was getting from her. And every time Mohammed would tell him, keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah. This is from Surah 33 verse 37. 
After this continued for a while, Zaid apparently gave up on the marriage and divorced his wife. Islamic history says that Muhammad then decided to ask Zainab to marry him, even though this defied Islamic law about a man marrying his son's wives. Oddly, Muhammad sent Zaid to deliver the proposal. Zaid went to his ex-wife's house and found her preparing flour to make bread. Zaid said of the moment, When I saw her, I could not even look her face to face because I still loved her. But he dutifully delivered the message from Muhammad. His ex-wife replied, Allah must tell me to marry him. She told Zaid that he, she was going to the mosque to pray. So Zaid went back to Muhammad and told him what had happened. And the end note for that reference is Ibn Kathir, the Quran commentary. Mansura, Egypt, Faith Library, 1996, Volume 3, Part 6, page 239. When Zainab was still at the mosque, Muhammad reported a new revelation from the angel Gabriel. Behold, you said to one who had received the grace of Allah and your favour, you retain in wedlock your wife and fear Allah, but you hid in your heart that which Allah was about to make manifest. You feared the people, but it is more fitting that you should fear Allah. Then, when Zaid had dissolved his marriage with her, with the necessary formality, we joined her in marriage to your, in order that, in future, there, be, there may be no difficulty to the believers in the matter of marriage with the wives to their adopted sons, when the latter have dissolved that the necessary formality, their marriage, with them. And Allah's command must be fulfilled. There can be no difficulty to the Prophet in what Allah has indicated to him as a duty. That's Surah 33, verses 37 to 38. That's the Ali translation. This revelation specifically said that Allah commanded Zainab to be married to Muhammad. The verse also pointed out that this marriage would help other Muslims by showing them that it was permissible for a man to marry his adopted son's former wife if the marriage had been properly dissolved. Muhammad also received a revelation that abolished adoption. Allah has not made your adopted sons your real sons. And that's from Surah 33, verse 4. As a result, Zaid was no longer considered Muhammad's son, which also served to legalise Muhammad's marriage to Zainab. In the end, Zainab agreed to marry Muhammad and became his fifth wife in AH5. Her former husband died three years later while fighting in Jihad. Zainab was quite happy with how things turned out for her. The Hadith record, Zainab used to boast before the wives of the Prophet and used to say, you were given in marriage by your families, while I was married to the Prophet by Allah from over seven heavens. And that is from The Correct Books of Bukhari, Volume 9, Book 93, Number 516, narrated by Anas. Let's look at one more specific example of how Muhammad obtained one of his wives. This one as a prisoner of war. Safiya, the Jewish beauty. By AH7, Muhammad had already routed most of the Jews out of Arabia. 
there was one village remaining, Kaiba. Mohammed and his army surrounded the village at night and attacked while the people were still asleep. He killed most of the young men and adults and the women and children were taken prisoners. And that is from Ibn Jaya, The History of Messengers and Kings, Volume 3, page 251. See also The Correct Books of Bukhari, Volume 2, Book 14, Number 8. Muhammad noticed one of the prisoners, a beautiful girl named Safiya. Her father was the leader of Kaibar, and she was still a new bride. Both her husband and father were killed by the Muslims that day. Muhammad asked his men, Whose prisoner is that woman? They replied, She belongs to Kais bin Thabet al Shamas. Muhammad gave this man Safiya's two cousins and took Safiya for himself. She travelled with Muhammad back toward Medina. During the journey, after her period was over, Muhammad married her. And that is from the correct books of Bukhari, volume 4, book 52, volume 153, and Ibn Ishaq in English, page 511. That night, sorry, the, the night Muhammad consummated his marriage with Safiya, one of Muhammad's followers stayed up all night walking around the tent with his sword at his side. In the morning Muhammad asked him why he did this. The man replied, I was afraid for you with this woman, for you have killed her father, her husband and her people. Until recently she was in unbelief, so I was afraid for you on her account. And that is from um, Ibn Ishaq, page, page 517. Muhammad's other wives. Each of Muhammad's wives had a story behind her, and I have told you the most significant and interesting ones. The complete listing of wives is as follows. 1. Khadija bint Kuwalid. He, married, he was married to her in Mecca for 25 years until her death. 2. Aisha bint Abu Bakr. She was young, jealous and caused trouble, but she was the favoured one. Daughter of Muhammad's closest friend and first successor to Islam. Hafza bint Umar ibn al Khattab. She was the daughter of one of Muhammad's fiercest warriors. 4. Um Habib Rumla bint Abi Sufyan. She was the daughter of the leader of the Quraysh tribe in Mecca who converted to Islam just before Muhammad conquered the city. 5. Zainab bint Jash. She was the first wife of Muhammad's adopted son. They divorced and Muhammad married her. 6. Um Salama and bint Abi Umayya. 7. My Mamuma bint El Harith El Hilila. 8. Sauda bint Zama al Amayya. <laughs> sorry, I'm not used to to um, pronouncing these these names. I'm sorry. At nine, Juyaira bint al Harith. She was a Jewish girl taken as a prisoner of war in a raid on Beni Mustalik, which incidentally was the same raid during which Aisha was accused of adultery. Safiya bint Hoye, she was a Jewish girl taken as a prisoner of war during the raid on Kaibar. 11. 
Rahana bint Shimhanon, twelve Maria bint Shimhanon, thirteen Um Sharik. As you remember, and he's referring to something that he stated before, the Quran only allowed Muslims two, three or four wives, but Muhammad was an exception. Muhammad reported a revelation that defined the women he was permitted to marry. O Prophet, we have made lawful to you your wives to whom you have paid their dowers, and those whom your right hand possesses out of the prisoners of war whom Allah has assigned to you, and daughters of your paternal uncles and aunts, and daughters of your maternal uncles and aunts who migrated from Mecca with you, and believing women who who dedicates her soul to the Prophet if the Prophet wishes to wed her, this only for you and not for the believers at large. And that's from Surah 33, verse 50, the Ali translation. When Muhammad died, he left nine wives. <coughs> when Muhammad died, he left nine living widows. Muhammad prohibited any of them from remarrying after his death. And then that's from Surah 33, verses 6 and 52. Okay, so you can make of those stories what you wish. And some may say that some of those verses that Al that um, Muhammad received from the angel Gabriel um, were convenient to say the least. But I'll let you decide for yourselves. <laughs> Thanks for watching.